are going to be speaking about The Drinker by Hans Falada. Please allow me to give you a little advice about reading this wonderful novel. First of all, save it for your day off. Wake up early, nice respectable hour, have a very substantial breakfast, put on a pot of coffee, get comfortable, put up your feet. Because once you start reading this novel, you will not want to stop. My last video, I, I mentioned that I read a really awful book and I picked this one up at about nine o'clock at night just to cleanse the palate. I imagined I would read 10 pages just to get a, some of the flavor and I read until about one o'clock in the morning, at which point my eyes felt like a piece of sandpaper left out in the afternoon sun. And I put the book aside and I closed my eyes and I thought that feels nice, but God damn, I really want to continue reading. The next morning I woke up, I had a glass of water and I kept reading. At one point I was ravenous and I went to the refrigerator and I ate three hard boiled eggs, like some kind of a maniac, which may be how you feel when you read this book. It is one of the most compulsive, obsessive books I've ever read. It, like I just, had to keep reading it. I read the whole book in 24 hours. This astonishing autobiographical tour de force was written by Hans Falada in an encrypted notebook hmm, while he was incarcerated in a Nazi insane asylum. Oh dear. Discovered after his death, it tells the tale, often fierce, often poignant, often even extremely funny, yes, of a small businessman losing control as he fights valiantly to blot out an increasingly oppressive society. I'll tell you a little bit about the plot. There's a man, he is a grocer, and he suffers a moderate setback to his business. Not crippling, moderate. Things will be difficult. He goes to see the man who canceled his contract with the business. They can't resolve the issue. He goes into the nearest pub and orders a beer. Now this man is a teetotaler. Occasionally will have a glass of beer. Wine is sour. Spirits make him feel nauseous. Orders a beer. He sees one of the local people is drinking a schnapps. Orders a schnapps and feels the golden warmth and happiness spreading throughout his essence realizes that he quite likes this feeling. Orders another one, gets insulted, goes for a little walk, and he stops in every pub on the way home having a glass of beer and a schnapps. And when he gets home, he's tanked. Tells his wife he's not feeling very well. She puts him to bed. He wakes up sometime in the evening, goes out to the nearest pub and just drinks. Immediately, like within the span of eight hours, becomes a raging alcoholic, which we have to appreciate this is a work of fiction. It doesn't quite happen that quickly. Usually people have to apply themselves, lose track of themselves for a great amount of time to become a diehard alcoholic. Hans Falada, as a good author, wants to tell the tale with speed quickness. Like there's no need to drag our feet with this novel. We, do, we don't need months and years of a slow descent. Like we can get through it quickly. And he, he just descends into alcoholism and it is very funny. There are just those, those funny scenes. If you are acquainted with the bottle, do you have ever found yourself in the kitchen at three o'clock in the morning with all the lights turned off and you're saying, shh, be quiet, shh, they're sleeping, shh. And you're by yourself. Be, be quiet. You start giggling. Aside from some of the humorous episodes, it is quite a tragedy. He really descends. That's the novel. It is a fairly simple tale. The writing, the speed, the, the mental clarity of the situation, the, the, the desire, wanting another bottle. Please, I need another bottle. What am I going to be prepared to do to get it? So good. 
This is actually the second time I have recorded this video because the first time I said a few things about the author Hans Fallada and then I did a little bit more research and then I did a little more. I am more confused than ever. This man, Hans Fallada, that is not his actual name. His name is Rudolf Wilhelm Friedrich Dietzen. Sensitive child. Not a very unusual phrase to use when describing an author. Um, his family moved to Berlin when he was, I believe, eight years old. And when he was 16 years old, he was run over by a horse-drawn carriage and kicked in the face by that horse, which is when you know that God has some special plans for you. At 17, he contracted typhoid. At 18, he entered into a suicide pact with his friend and that they would carry out this suicide pact by having a duel because that way it would seem honorable and not so cowardly as just regular suicide. So they would have it, they would shoot one another. Now, neither of these boys was well acquainted with pistols so that one, two, three, bang, his friend misses. Rudolf, or Hans, does not miss and kills his friend, shoots him dead. He, overcome with grief, picks up his pistol and shoots himself in the chest. At least he was committed. And then he was, he was committed. He wasn't charged with murder. He was let off the charges of manslaughter or whatever they are uh, because he was mentally incapable. And he was sent to a hospital and an insane asylum. And while he was there recovering from his wounds, he developed taste for morphine. It became quite a morphine addict, as well as alcohol and as well as cigarettes. It is reported, with how much truth I do not know, that he smoked between 120 and 200 cigarettes a day. If you're not a smoker, one box of cigarettes is 20. So that's between six and 10 packs. 10 packs is a whole carton. You know those men with the yellow fingers and they also have that nice yellow lip. If you go to Wikipedia, that's just the paragraph called early life. That, that's just the beginning. That's before he's even written anything. The story just gets more and more convoluted and it's just, you, you keep peeling back another layer of, oh Christ, what's in store for this poor man next? Good things. He got married, gave up morphine and threw all of that addictive energy into writing. And he wrote with a fierce passion. He, he, he was fanatical for writing, like that became his new addiction. There, there's a whole bit about why did he not leave Germany when the Nazi party was coming to power? He, he couldn't. He felt that he could never leave Germany. And he continued to write, although it was very strongly under the, the iron glove of the Nazi censorship party. That marriage that saved his life from morphine addiction, that disintegrated because of his frustration with having to write Nazi restricted literature. He just seemed to give up on life. Had a little affair with the, um, the au pair, uh, which led to his divorce. And there is a story that he may or may not have shot at his wife. And she may have retaliated by taking the pistol away from him and beating him with it. His neighbors informed on him that he was an anti-Nazi propagandist. And he took up with a woman from Berlin who also was an alcoholic and a morphine addict, and this led to his final incarceration in an insane asylum, where he wrote this novel. And if you check the dates, the book was published in 1950 and he died in 1947. So there you have it. And this author, I've never heard of. You know, like I, I've had so many small miracles in the last year of my life that all of a sudden, just somewhere, somehow, in another book, you, you read this, oh, like someone drops in a name and a title. So I dog ear the book and I go and I check it later and I'm like, okay, that sounds interesting. I'll put that on the list. And I start learning about this author and he's published a huge amount of literature, a lot, really a lot. See that he wrote a book early on in his career, escalated him to fame, which actually went on to be a stage production. And I believe it was made into a film in Hollywood. One of the things that the Nazis did not like was that it was produced or somehow that American film was made with Jewish backing and the Nazis don't like that. And now he's in trouble. Can you imagine that world? He's in trouble because they don't like the people who produced a film 
like on the other side of the world. Like, so that is The Drinker. And this is the first book of 2022 that I strongly encourage you to read. You know, this should be a book that could be on anybody's shelf. Like any, anyone could pick up this book and read it and think, like, yeah, yeah, that, that's how it is. Like that's the way it goes when you get into alcohol like that. Anyone can read this book. You don't have to be a literature obsessive. You don't, you don't need to know anything about Germany. It's just about a man steadfast in decline. If it takes you longer than a week to read that book, please write to me, leave a comment because I don't believe you. All right, thank you very much for listening. This is Grant Loves Books and I'm gonna get the video edited and onto Patreon by Sunday and on YouTube by Thursday. So if you're watching this on the 13th of January, you could have been watching this three days earlier, you loser. <laughs> so if you want to support me on Patreon, you can get the videos a little bit earlier. makes me happy too because the spine is just so, you know, it's like a warning label. It's like, children, how to make them docile. All right, you ready? One, not before, on three, on three. All right, it's important. One, wait a minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count one, two, three as an example, just to, so you get the pace. One, two, three, shoot, on three. All right, are you ready now?